This wild and shadowy jungle is a keeper of secrets. The Darien Gap is home to rare species and indigenous villagers. It also hides people smugglers and drug runners and the discarded bodies of those they have murdered. Many who enter do not come out. But for people who dream of living in the United States, it's still a risk worth running. Throughout my career, I've reported from dangerous places. But the story of the Darien Gap has been on my mind for as long as I can remember. It's a black zone to the extreme. If something goes wrong, you're on your own. I've been prepping for this story for more than nine months. Waterproof matches, all-purpose knife, eating tool, um, anti-mosquito arsenal here. I'm hoping to meet migrants who fled their homelands to attempt this journey. I'm leaving behind my partner Susie and my daughter to join them as they cross the Darien. It's a 150 kilometer jungle wilderness between Colombia and Panama that no sane person would dare enter. And yet each year, thousands of people do. Migrants and refugees from around the world including Syria, Afghanistan, Nigeria, and Nepal, are willing to risk everything for a long shot chance at reaching the USA. In many ways, their story is the story of my family. My father took a gamble of his own to reach the United States. In the years running up to the revolution of the late 70s, he left Iran. Unable to get a visa to the US, he bought a ticket to Canada, then faked an illness during a layover in New York. His gopher broke stunt secured a safer life for us, free from threats and oppression. So how many days are you gonna be off the grid and in the jungle? It's hard to say. Well, it just depends on the conditions and the security on the route. I'm taking my chances in the Darien Gap because I want to experience firsthand the struggle of migrants. The United Nations estimates globally more than 65 million have been uprooted due to war, poverty, and terrorism. Ordinary people thrust into a dance with death as they brave deserts and seas. And now, the jungle, where I'm going. If migration is the story of our time, the Darien Crossing is its crucible. My first stop is Bogota, the capital of Colombia. The streets are plastered with reminders of the violence that's gripped the country for more than five decades. Colombia is known for being the cocaine powerhouse of the world, producing the drug in greater quantities than any other country. But today, Colombia hides another secret trade, migrant trafficking. Well, 
Policia! I meet up with a friend and colleague, Carlos Villalon, a veteran photojournalist. We're here! <laughs> We've both been documenting migration issues for years, and we both chase stories in places most would rather avoid. Carlos is well connected in Colombia after covering the drug war for more than a decade. Things change like this it's fluid in the field. Yeah. You know, I mean. And I'm relying on him and his connections to get us through the journey safely. So you, you understand what type of a place we're gonna go to. Yeah. I'm getting the picture. It's like, we're gonna take a look and we're gonna talk to super reliable sources. So that's why if we made the decision that it's a no-go, we're really gonna be saving our asses. Really. I mean it's not a joke. That's what I'm telling, you know. We're gonna be smart. Yeah. yeah. But we've done our homework. Can we look at a map of the the tentative so route? But do you have a, even a Google map that we could just look at? Many of the places we'll visit aren't marked. There are no roads. It's lawless and uncharted. Basically, from here to here to Bihau is just a boat. And then we're going to get to the Wangnam village in a boat, walk, walk, and then boat. We're basing our trip on a hand-drawn map from our local contacts. We sleep in Paya one day with the police, and then we go... To our knowledge, no film crew has ever made it through the Darien before. Carlos and I, along with our cameraman Roger Arnold, will attempt the trek alongside migrants on their way to the United States. We want to walk in the shoes of those fleeing persecution, to document a migrant journey few have heard of. Drug runners, leftist rebels, and cutthroat criminals also use the same route we'll take. It's risky. Then there's nature. The Darien is rife with jaguars, crocodiles, venomous spiders, and snakes. In the Darien region, what are the most common symptoms of the bites that are treated in that region? Necrosis, neurotoxins, hemorrhaging, and effect on lots of sweat. Yeah. You start melting inside. So basically. it's multifaceted. Yeah. There are no medical facilities in the jungle. So our survival may depend on this snake bite training course and our limited supply of anti venom, which we'll carry with us. Most of the snakes, 99% of them, it's one shot to each butt cheek and then the IV in the arm. The most dangerous one that yeah. is a very well, so which is like two meters long Up to or six. six yeah beats you on the vein, you have 10 minutes to leave. So we're not gonna use this thing on you and we're gonna keep it for the next one. That yeah. gets, At that point you know, I'm dead weight. Save, save, yourselves. save yourselves. Save yourselves. You have 10 minutes, <laughs> here's your shovel. <laughs> no, in that case you take the machete, just hack the limb off, yeah. We've prepared as much as we can taking sat phones, trackers, and medicines, resources the migrants go without. So we travel north to the tip of Colombia, to Turbo, a hub for drug and people traffickers. Migrants fly into Latin American countries like Ecuador and Brazil, where entry visas aren't required. It's here, on the edge of Colombia, where they board boats and enter the void that is the Darien Gap. But not all the boats departing from Turbo make it. As with many refugees coming to Australia by boat, drownings here are not uncommon. We were told that a lot of the migrants who died on the water when they were traveling in really rickety boats were buried here anonymously. If you look here, it just says N, N, no name. Looks like there are about a dozen or more migrants buried here in the mausoleum. Out on the river, our journey into the Darien jungle truly begins.
This remote region is largely untouched by the modern world. Smugglers have long used this route to move timber, guns, and cocaine. We just made the turn up the Cacodica River. This is the route that a lot of the migrants take up to the Panama border. It's uh, pretty much virgin jungle from here on out. Our driver grapples with the foliage that's choking the river. This area is controlled by the notorious revolutionary armed forces of Colombia known as FARC. For more than 50 years, the leftist rebel group has been fighting to overthrow the Colombian government. Both sides are now in peace talks, but the rebels can be brutal. They murdered a Swedish backpacker in the same area just a few years ago. Many migrants have also vanished on this route. So. This might be the end of the line for us for now. The water in some places is less than a foot deep and the bottom of the boat is starting to scrape a little bit. This guy's trying not to grind the, the rotor blades on the motor. This looks like we might have to get out and pull pretty soon. We arrive at a small ramshackle hamlet where we hope to gain permission to pass through Fark turf. Our safety depends on their good favor. We meet with Elber, a Fark representative. These men and women call the shots in this part of the Darien. They tell us that one of the few ways to earn a living out here is through drug and people trafficking. Then, they ask us to leave with them. So Elber has just invited us to a clandestine meeting of the local FARC political committee. So I'm just gonna follow these guys and see what they have to say. They're not comfortable with our cameras. But a few hours later, we're given permission to proceed through FARC territory in the Darien. But can we truly trust them? We push on motoring further upriver, hoping to cross paths with migrants bound for the United States. The deeper into the Darien we go, the more vulnerable we become. Amigo. We stop at the village of Bihau. Bihau is known as a way station for migrants about to enter the most difficult part of their journey to America. <laughs> Our plan is to wait here until the next group of migrants arrive. 
In the meantime, we immerse ourselves in local life, including the delicacies. Locals here hunt crocodiles for fresh meat and hearty stew. Much like the migrants who regularly pass through, these villagers also dream of a better life. This village lacks steady electricity, schools, and clinics. People here die of treatable illnesses like malaria. Quantos años tienes? Ocho. Ocho años. Te gusta el fútbol? Sí. Incoming migrants buy supplies here and pay local guides hundreds of U.S. dollars to take them through the jungle to Panama. The guides risk prison if caught by Panama's border guards. But villagers see it as a service that brings much-needed money into the community. For the migrants, it's a lifeline. Without a skilled guide in the jungle, death is one wrong turn away. I was just looking around this room where we're boarding up, and on the window I found a message. It says nine Somalians. There's a list of nine names here, and it's dated March 10th, 2014. At the bottom it says Panama All. It's another piece of evidence that we're on the immigrant trail. While we kill time, waiting for the next group of migrants to show up, normal village life goes on around us. It's been five days, and we're still waiting to share the stories of those seeking freedom and a better life. But are we chasing shadows? Thank you. Finally, my producer rings with some news, and we learn why we haven't seen any migrants. The Panama border has been shut down, the migrants' route has been blocked. Things are so fluid right now, you know. I mean, you know, one thing is uh, the migrants are going to find a way through regardless. Um, and, you know, if they're stopping them up in Kapurgana near the, the coast, and now, you know, in the, the Darien, I mean, there, there are going to be other routes, and it just it opens up another opportunity for the, the smugglers. So, you know, it's, it's like water. They're going to they're gonna keep moving and finding the openings. It's believed some 25,000 migrants crossed into Panama last year, bound for the United States. Nobody knows how many made it all the way. But in the middle of our Dateline shoot, the country's president declares migrants will now be rejected, without exception, whether refugees or not. 
So what do you think if we continue, we get as close as we can? What's going on? Yeah. We just keep keep getting intel from the locals. Maybe they know some alternate routes. We're going to Kakarika and we're going to do as we plan and then we're going to go up there anyways. Restless, after a week of waiting, we hit the water in search of other villages where migrants sometimes pass through. seen anyone on the river all day. So when the driver tells us he smells migrants, I'm skeptical. But then, people. How you doing, guys? How are you guys? You speak English? Two weary stragglers. Brother man. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Hello, brother. Yeah, thank you. How are you? We walk in the muddy water to catch up to their boat. Hungry and exhausted, they tell me their homes are in Bangladesh and Nepal. When you leave Bangladesh? Oh, one month. One month before. They've come halfway around the world. And as their smiles fade, their hardships tumble out. Now, just a little bit more, let me rest. Sleep, shower, rest, okay? Okay, Jali, cello, okay, cello. Together, we trudge two hours up the river shallows back to Bihau village, where we've been staying. The migrants can relax for the first time in days. They've traveled overland from Brazil, through Bolivia, Peru, and Ecuador to Colombia. In the UN-built migrant hostel, they read messages from those who've braved the journey before them. And then leave their mark. Confident that when the next group reads their names, they'll be safe in Panama and continuing onward to the U.S.
People join migration trails across the globe for all kinds of reasons, mostly to escape danger and persecution. But some cross borders for purely economic reasons. We can't know for sure if these travelers are genuine refugees. It's late, but 20-year-old Arafat from Bangladesh wants to tell me about his journey so far. Okay, thanks. With the help of a translator via satellite phone, I learn more about why he's here, risking his life in the Darien Gap. Arafat, are you scared about this journey, about what lies ahead, about all the unknowns? By একটা দিন কি আমার একটা মনের আছে কি আল্লাহকে শরণ করলে সবকিছু ইনশাআল্লাহ সফল হয় By nightfall nine more migrants have joined us from Cameroon, Togo and Gambia The group now totals 20 They're bound together by a shared hope of starting over in the United States. This one? This one. This one. The kind of life my father envisioned and got for us. This one. Can you hold your bolt? In the morning, we plan to enter the Darien Gap together. Come closer. It's at least two full days' trek through the jungle to the border. Good night. Good night. Sleep well. Good night, man. The riskiest part of one of the world's most treacherous migrant journeys lies ahead. <laughs> <laughs> 